Hi, this is Douglas at PCC, and in this video, you'll learn how to manage and update patient and family records with PCC. How do you add a patient and their family account? How do you update their demographics or enter contact preferences? How do you handle a patient with two households? We're going to show you all of these tools so you are ready to handle anything that a family or patient brings your way. You have to update demographics at a lot of different points, right? Maybe you're on the phone with mom. Maybe the patient is standing in front of you at the check-in desk. PCC EHR has many different workflows with customizable protocols. So maybe when I check a patient in, I edit their demographics right here in patient check-in. But maybe they aren't checking in. That's okay. You can edit demographics for the patient or the family at any time. So for this video, we're going to do all of our patient and family management inside a chart. As you may know, I can double click on any patient to open their chart or use the find box up here. I can search by all kinds of things. I'll just use their name, but phone number and other things work too. And I'll open a patient's chart. I'm going to navigate to the demographic section of the chart by clicking on the navigation button over here on the left. Okay. So what kind of patient and family components are in here? As with other protocols in PCC EHR and other chart sections, I can see anchor buttons over here on the left that correspond with components on the right. Uh, these same components could also be added to your phone notes or your chart notes, a patient check-in, or the patient details screen when you schedule. I've got a patient demographics component, uh, communication preferences, account demographics, and so forth. Now, this leads to the first important point about all records in PCC. Uh, this is the patient's chart, right? And the patient has some demographics like their age, sex, race, uh, some status flags. And in PCC, that patient is connected to one or more accounts, uh, which I see down here in the account demographics component. The account has the address, the phone number, account flags, and other details. Uh, you might have three kids with the same single home account under mom or dad. You might have one patient with two different family accounts, uh, one who is the home or the custodian, uh, a different one for billing. A patient may even move from one family to another. The medical records stay with the patient. Okay, before we get into adding and moving patients around, let's just update some patient information. Uh, so I'll click Edit down here to enter editing mode. And then I'll give this patient a nickname. Now I've turned on all the optional fields in here, by the way. Uh, you can see uh, gestational age at birth down here and multiple births, uh, the works. Your practice may have different options in here. One important one, this down here, is where you would indicate that a patient is deceased. It's important to do that when appropriate uh, so that parents don't get reminders about this patient, uh, the patient doesn't show up on sibling lists, and so forth. Uh, these fields over here on the right, I've uh, got patient flags, PCP, that's primary care provider. Uh, if you use that, this is where you set it. These other fields over here are optional, customizable. Uh, these, these flags are what your practice chooses to track, and other fields in here were set up by my practice. Down here you see relation to bill payer. That's the default relationship. It's very possible a patient is covered by two different insurance policies, which may have different relationships. Uh, this is the default relationship for this patient. As I mentioned, we got birth history down here. Along with race, ethnicity, and preferred language, different practices in different parts of the country have rules about these fields. Uh, you might be required to collect race information. Uh, this is where it goes. One other tip, by the way, uh, I'll, I'll click Save to save that new nickname I entered. Do you see the patient information box in the upper right-hand corner here? Uh, you see the new nickname I entered. Now, this box is always, always visible in the upper right corner when you've got a chart open. It's got, you know, important details on the patient. You can click on that to get some more details, like the primary care provider, if you need it on the fly. Okay, what other demographic or patient and family information can I update? Uh, the next component here is communication preferences. Again, your practice decides exactly how you want to use this. Uh, but notifications and other functionality will look here first, so we recommend filling it out for every patient. It can be particularly important for older teenage patients. 
There's a little immunization registry communication preference in here. Uh, this is one of those things that varies state to state. Uh, for immunization registries to work, you may be required to indicate that the patient or the parent has been informed that you submit IMSS records to the state. Uh, probably they signed that on an intake form. Uh, you can pick a preferred contact method for state IMSS related communication too. But next up, account demographics. So we covered the patient specific details up top. These are the family specific details. Now this patient has one account, Thomas Martin. And you can see that this is the patient's home and billing account. Take note of that. It could be two different accounts. Okay, so I can see the Thomas Martin family's contact information. And over here on the right, I've got a quick reference to recent activity for this account. When did we last send them a bill? Uh, did, did the billing office put in a whole bill until or budget amount? All of this might be useful when you're speaking with a family. The patient portal users component here also typically appears on demographics. Uh, we've just seen the family information, and in this component, we can see who can look at this patient's records in the patient portal. This is really important. Uh, most offices add this component to patient check-in, to phone notes. Uh, you can always access it here in demographics. Now, what I love about the patient portal users component is I get to help the family with the portal. If I see they've never logged into the patient portal, I can help them out. If their password is expired, I can click Manage Portal User and give them a new one. Next, we have a personal contacts component. I'm going to add Grandma. And you may notice this specialty pull down. This is also a way you can add the patient's physical therapist or other specialist, right? You could keep that on file for the patient right here. After you've added a personal contact, you can add a note. So you may note what permissions this individual has, for example. Another component in this chart section, account balances. The first time you see this grid, it's a bit odd, but it's super useful and powerful. All of the outstanding unpaid charges for this family are totaled here, broken into three lines. Uh, charges due personal, charges still pending insurance, and charges pending Medicaid, which the billers out there know can be very different from insurance balances. Uh, the total is over at the right, and the personal total is in red, making it easy to quickly tell the family what they owe. Even better, you can click Encounters with Outstanding Personal Balances, and get an explanation of those charges that make up that red balance. Watch the patient check-in video to learn more about this and see how to post payments. The policies component, like other components on this ribbon, may be elsewhere. We have a whole video on using this component, but basically I see this patient's insurance policies and I can update or make changes. At the bottom I have some other components you may use when you work with a patient or an account. I can open any siblings chart with a single click here, and I can generate any of my practice's custom form letters. Okay, we've got a brand new patient at the practice. How do I create a new chart for them? Well, first, I'll try to find them up here. Nope, can't find them, so I'll click Create Patient. I get the basic patient demographics component first, so I can enter patient information. What about their address and mom and dad? No problem, I click Assign Account. Now, maybe this is a new child on a family we already know, right? Maybe I'll just find the parents and be good to go. But let's pretend we need a brand new account too, so I'll click Create Account. Here's where I put in account or parent information for this new patient. Here's a thought. Uh, in some circumstances, the patient might be their own guardian, their own address, their own bill payer. Not typical for a pediatric practice, but it definitely happens. In this case, I'm creating an account for the parents. Okay, I click Save to create the new account. And now I'm back on the Create Patient screen. You can see down here, Donald Galdworthy will be the home and billing account for this patient. 
The last thing I'm probably going to do when entering a new patient is enter their policy information, so I'll do that now. I click Add Policy. By the way, if this is a family I already know, I could grab the policy from a sibling with this pull-down menu right here. But this family is totally new to us. Do you like my sample, certificate, and group number? And you'll notice I can select a specific relationship to subscriber for this patient. Uh, if this was a Medicaid plan, this might be self, by the way. We have a full video on all policy management features, adding, expiring, rearranging policies. You can check that out on learn.pcc.com. Okay, I think I'm done. I've entered patient information, account information, and an insurance policy. I'll click Save. I'm brought right into the new patient's chart. Here's their name, up here in the upper right-hand corner. And I'm brought to the demographic section of their chart, so I could add any additional details. Okay, to wrap up this video, maybe this is a kid with two households, and you need to track contact information for two different guardians, right? Uh, maybe one person is the guarantor, the bill-paying address, but the patient has another custodian address as well. Happens all the time. This patient also lives at his mom's house. I'll click Edit and then go to Account Demographics. This patient also lives at his mom's house, so I'll click Reassign Account. That's right here in the Account Demographics component. And once again, maybe mom is already in the system, so I'll look for her. Nope, only Donald on the system. So I can now click Create Account. I'll enter some basic demographic information, the pieces that we need. And then click Save. PCC stops me here and says, OK, is this new account going to be the home or billing account, or both? This is just a new home account for the patient, Gary Galdworthy. I click Save. And then I'm back in the demographic section of the patient's chart so I can check my work. Take a look at the account demographics component for this patient now. Up here, I have a home account for this patient, uh, Gwyneth Goldworthy, and all of her information. And then here, in a separate bubble, I have the billing account for Donald Goldworthy and all of his information. As I've mentioned, we're doing all of this in the demographic section of the patient's chart, which is fine, but of course this same component, these same tools, appear during patient check-in, uh, they can pop up when you're scheduling in the appointment book. The tools work the same way no matter where you're working. A quick tip, when I'm on the phone with a family and making these sort of changes, I always double-check the patient portal users component as well. Who should have access to this patient's records on their smartphone? I can review and update that right here, add mom, or click edit, use the manage portal user feature to adjust what billing information appears for this portal user. Uh, should this portal user see an outstanding balance? That sort of thing. If the right folks are using the patient portal, it will save your practice time and effort down the road, so take a look at it whenever you adjust patient and family information. As I mentioned before, uh, PCC's different chart sections, chart notes, and other protocols are customizable. If you have a need, something your practice needs to track for your patients and families, get in touch with your client advocate. We'll help you set it up. And when you collect this kind of demographic information, it means you can do really powerful things. You can run reports, create lists of patients for recall, send out automated notifications about upcoming appointments. You can learn about all of these features and more and read the written version of this video at learn.pcc.com. Thanks for watching.